All right, these protests around the world, a lot of hateful comments have been said between those who uh, cannot countenance saying anything bad about Hamas, evil is evil, whatever you have. Uh, but it's really brought out sometimes the worst in us as a human species all across the globe, to say nothing of comic protests and the like, where they go at each other's throats, sometimes quite literally. Uh, Anna Sheila Johnson, um, we had booked her some time ago. And, and I, I got to tell you, folks, we could not have gotten better timing for her. She's the author of Walk Through Fire, a memoir of love, loss, and tribes. Went to Salamander Hotel and Resorts, founder and CEO, business titan in her own life. But she has gone through hell and back. Uh, she's obviously one of the most, forget about most successful business women on the planet, most successful business human beings on the planet. But it's that journey that we think is very, very instructive now. Good to have you, Sheila. Thank you Thank for you. coming. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. You know, we were saying during the break briefly about all the hatred out there, uh, you know, Jews who hate Palestinians, uh, Palestinians who hate Jews. It's, it's, it's not across the board. I want to right. stress that. But you've heard the shouting and everyone, you know, going at each other uh, and the cruelty beyond cruelty. Uh, and yet you dealt with the same kind of thing. Exactly. Forget the race stuff growing up and dealing with disappointments with your dad, a husband who cheated on you, a lot of bitterness that could have sidelined you and said the hell with it, but you didn't succumb to it. So what do you tell people going through this now? I think more than anything, um, from the very beginning, I had to grow up very quickly, you know, before the age of 16, and uh, dealing with a father who just left suddenly. And back then, you know, women didn't have the rights that they supposedly have now yeah. you know uh, my mother didn't have credit cards she didn't have a bank account uh, he wouldn't pay for child support so there were a lot of lessons that I learned earlier including racism very early and very on. early racism so I mean what else was I supposed to do I had to really just try and find a path in life where I was going to fight against all of this it made me stronger it really did and what people don't realize, I moved very early in my life, 13 times, because my father, you talk about racism, one of eight African-American neurosurgeons in the country that couldn't practice in white hospitals or on white patients. So they moved us around when it needed to happen. Um, and but from that... you didn't that, accept it. You didn't accept it. I mean, I, I, I love this story. There, there, there was one uh, country store you had visited that was displaying the Confederate flag. Yeah. You bought the town. I didn't quite buy the town. Well, what but what <laughs> happened to the flag? I bought the store. Right. It was a gun shop. And I, I think every time I went into Middleburg, Virginia, I just could not stand what it stood for. But not that's in sent a, a powerful statement doing it that way. There are a lot of people, Jews right now, who feel mm -hmm. targeted all around the world. Small part of the population, but they're targeted right now. What do you tell them? Because you've gone through a lot of this. Yes, I've gone through a lot, but it's a way that you want to target or talk to people. Yeah. I think because of my arts background, I've been able to really deal with issues in a very creative way. I mean, we do it through a film festival. Right. We do it through a food and wine event. Yeah, um, I like the food and wine event. Yes. They're, they're good. And um, to be able to deal with those very difficult issues, and I know that through the arts, and especially with my film festival, I've been able to you know, bring in films that deal with those very issues that we're talking about and to have panel discussions afterwards. How do we talk to one another? How do we better communicate? Well, if you had a situation like this, Sheila, I mean, would you bring Palestinian guests and Jewish guests together I will. talk about this? Because we, we don't seem to be doing a lot of that. We have to start communicating with one another. We have to stop fighting with one another. We have to... I mean, but this we, is beyond talk. Right? This is crazy stuff. No, us, this right? is crazy stuff. But I still feel as though, in my heart of hearts and instinctually, that if we were to get together and really talk with one another about our issues, yeah, and and stop setting up barriers, we, it's the only way this world's going to be able to continue. All right. So when we have a situation like what's going on in the Middle East, people worry hatred is real. It's there for the world to see. Everyone knows what happened in Israel almost four weeks ago. And that was patently over the top nightmares, right. right? Absolutely. So, how do you rationally explain that to people, Jews who feel violated, others who feel that we haven't gotten over the horrors of the past? We keep almost reliving them. 
What do you do? Well, I'll tell you what I did, especially um, in the third act of my life of building a hospitality company. I had the same resentment that came to me. It was a racial issue where I had to go up against people that lived in the area. But you know what I did? I put myself in their shoes. And so I went into the hearings and I said, you know what, I really understand what you're going through. I don't want you to feel threatened. I want you to understand that I'm here to help. And it was the way that we were able to communicate with one another. Now, in the end, I only won by one vote. Right. But I'm just saying to this day, I have made more friends than enemies because I was able, and it was the way both me and my company and my team of executives were able to deal with that. I think you also had a Midas touch, your business success notwithstanding, but I think it goes back to you listen to everybody. You, you don't have to isolate anyone. Yeah, um, that's quite the opposite today. Where Republicans and Democrats don't even confer with each what other, even in the Republican Party, where they have the hot feels of the court. Right. I think what happens is we all talk too much. I yeah. think someone has to sit back and listen, and then figure out within the lines of communication how do we answer those very difficult questions? How do we get to the softer side and be able to start communicating in a better way? I mean, I've had to do it all my life in every situation. I've had three acts in life as a concert violinist in media and now in hospitality. And you know, sometimes people talk way too much and they need to sit back and listen to and really put yourself in their shoes and see where they're coming from. I don't think we're listening to one no. another. Yeah, some TV anchors do that. It's, it's so obnoxious. Let me ask you, though, Sheila, stepping back, and I don't want to get too... I, really, you got to read the book, because some of these stories are over the top. But you had a husband who was, was cheating on you, was, was treating you like crap. Yeah. Um, you, you had a sister-in-law who was embezzling you. Uh, I, I could go on and on. I mean, that's the kind of personal stuff that would eat away at me my entire life. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It did eat away. And about five years ago, so many people came to me and they said, you have really got to tell your side of the story. I was quiet. Well, you didn't know about it, certainly. What, didn't you know, know about it, and yeah. I just did not make a big deal about it. I was behind the but scenes working. But Johnson. He was an iconic figure. And, and uh, you know, the, well, the black know, I had something to do that. with it, too. Absolutely. <laughs> but no one knew at the time. I know. And that's what happens. There's did you not at the time to say, wait a minute, this is all... There were times that I confronted him and, and it just got, it escalated to the point where I just said, you know, this is it, we gotta sell the company. Yeah. I was fired from the company, you know, and I had put so much work into the company and sweat equity and economic equity into the company. It was just time that I got pushed to the curve and I had had enough. And it was time for me, I knew it was time that we needed to get out, and it was time for me to start a new life. But they later found out you were the brains behind the operation. <laughs> you were the smarts. The woman never gets the credit. Right? We never get the credit, right. uh, but we do put a lot of work behind it. And I'll give him credit, he's smart too. Right. And um, I really wanted but him to shine. But you were vindictive about it, which is, by the way, another, which circles back to where we stand now, uh, you know, to. To, to be vindictive, rightly so sometimes mm -hmm. in, the, in these horror times. What do you tell people who feel compelled to do that? Well, see, that's what's going on in these wars. Yeah. Everyone's being vindictive. And when you do that, nobody wins. So it was just a case... Easier said than done. I know it's easier yeah. said than done. But, you know, sometimes we're just going to have to try and figure this out. And I didn't want to be vindictive. I just knew in my heart of hearts that I needed to move on. And then eventually people said, you have got to tell your side of the story. But not being vindictive, see, that would have held me back in my third act in life, yeah. and I wouldn't have been able to move forward in building a new company. So you don't want to take that toxicity with you, because that then sets boundaries. You can't walk through the doors. There were opportunities that came up in the third act of my life from buying sports teams. Right, right. To be able to First really help transform. Yeah. Yes, yeah. to transform. So success oh, is the ultimate revenge. It works. Yeah. But if you carry these grudges with you, you're not going to be able to move forward. And no. that's what's really interesting because wounds build wisdom. You're right. But see, I come from an Italian family where we hold grudges for decades. <laughs> and we have no idea why, but we do. Um, Sheila, thank you so much. A very timely reminder. You're Sheila so Johnson. Welcome.
uh, just a wonderful human being and a wonderful message. We all need to hear. Walk through the fire, a memoir of love, loss, and triumph. She's experienced it all, and she's living proof that you can come out of a dark time. I think at this time, in this world, in this craziness, we need to hear that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.